Hi, welcome back to the next exciting video snippet from Follett. Um, today we're going to read the last part of chapter 17. And just to let you know, there's nothing in this little snippet right here that you can't share with the entire world. Anybody can listen to this. Yes, at any time, anywhere. Yeah, I'll do that for you every once in a while. We'll get back to the other stuff in, a, in an upcoming snippet. Uh, once again, I'll post a link so you can buy yourself a copy of this sterling novel. I'm just going to say it that way. It's a heck of a deal. Anyway, so if you're ready, here we go. They continued south on Route 15, turning onto Route one just south of Letsworth and stayed on that road until it disappeared just east of Baton Rouge. Are we going to stop in Baton Rouge, Follett, Mary asked? No, Mary, Follett asked. You know, the only reason Baton Rouge is the state capital is because Louisiana thought New Orleans was too sinful. Let's go to Fobator's house and pay him a visit before we go to New Orleans tomorrow. I thought Fobator lived in New Orleans. He keeps his business there, but he lives in Thibodeau, and about an hour and a half away. Why Thibodeau? Well, Mary, Thibodeau is one of the most haunted places in Louisiana. Fobator says that ghosts are the dreams of the dead. And probably more importantly, Amos Moses, Follett said. Amos Moses? Aside from Jerry Reed's mother, Fobator might well be his biggest fan. And Fobator's favorite Jerry Reed song is Amos Moses. And Follett cleared his throat and began to sing. Now, Amos Moses was a Cajun. He lived by himself in the swamp. He hunted alligators for a living. He'd just knock them in the head with a stump. Louisiana law ain't going to get you, Amos. It ain't legal hunting an alligator down in the swamp, boy. Now, everybody blamed his old man for making him as mean as a snake. When Amos Moses was a boy, his daddy would use him for alligator bait. Tie a rope around his waist and throw him in the swamp. Alligator bait in Louisiana by you. About 45 minutes southeast of Thibodeau, Louisiana, lived a man called Doc Millsap and his pretty wife, Hannah. Well, they raised up a son who could eat his weight in groceries, named him after a man of the cloth, called him Amos Moses. Now, the folks around the South Louisiana said Amos was a hell of a man. He could trap the biggest, the meanest alligator and just use one hand. And that's all he got left because the alligator bit it, left arm gone clean up to the elbow. Well, the sheriff got wind that Amos was in the swamp tracking alligator skin. So he snuck in the swamp, going to get that boy, but he never come out again. Well, I wonder where that Louisiana sheriff went to. He sure can get lost in Louisiana Bayou. Mary laughed and clapped her hands when Fallot finished. Fobator bought one of the Thibodeau plantations in 1970 or so and has lived there ever since. There's plenty of room for all of his children and it's far enough out in the country so no one comes calling without good reason. You love that big old house. It's a great Creole mansion, plantation house with a hip roof, four galleries, eight dormers, a brick basement, and two elaborate stairs leading from the ground to the gallery, as well as two central hallways, one on each floor. The construction is briquette uh, entree porto with four internal chimneys. It's quite a show place. After all, Bobator is Lord of Nightmares, Paulette reminded her. They drove for another couple of hours. Paula took more turns than Mary could count, and just when she was about to ask him if he wanted to stop and ask directions, she saw a remarkable building across a field. They drove past a white-painted wooden board fence that stretched for at least a mile before they came to a break in the fence. Gigantic live, live oaks swathed, the span, swathed in Spanish moss lined the driveway, which stretched a quarter of a mile, curving off to the right so the house was hidden from those coming up the driveway. Follett pulled up in front of a huge home that put Tara to shame. And just as Follett turned off the caddy and got out of the car, Fobator walked out of the massive French doors at the top of a wide marble staircase. Follett, Mary, thank you for coming. Fobator walked down the stairs and enfolded Follett in a warm embrace. The two men held each other for a moment, and the Lord turned to Mary, bowed, and kissed her hand. Mary blushed. Your room is the blue one, first on the left at the top of the stairs. Dinner's at eight. No need to dress. We're pretty informal here. Fobator told him before he turned to go, I'll let the cook know we have two more for dinner. Follett looked at Mary, took her hand, and walked into the great house. <laughs>